Welcome back to Rusty Relics, guys. I figured I'd start off with a new intro. Uh, mm. Sorry it took us a little bit longer to get started today. And that's kind of my fault because I had to update what we got going on. May May said hello, friends. Hey, May May. Hi, May May. All right, Missy, you want to talk about what we're doing? Hey, guys, it's me, Missy, with Rusty Relics. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> today, I'm going to paint these um, little crock jars up. Um... I don't know. Did you show these or why do I feel no, like I? No, they're they're pink. We never showed okay, them. Okay, we didn't show them. All right, you'll so, have to show them up underneath. Okay, so originally two of these had lids. The other two didn't. I really didn't care about the lids um, because I like them like this, especially if you use them to stick stuff in. These are handmade ceramics. It looks like a JDR did them in 1991. So I thought that was really cool and I kind of left the bottom like that so you could still see it. But they were glazed and they were pink, like a very light pink. Um, so I really wasn't too fond of the color. So um, I will tell you what I did to prep them up because um, I used Slick Sticks, which is known now as Bonding Boss. But I yep. still have a jar of Stick Slick, and I'll show it to y'all. Stick Slick. Stick Slick, <laughs> yeah. I still have a jar that's open from um, before they switched over because um, this stuff really goes really far. You can use this for a lot of projects. So it's called Bonding Boss now. So if you go looking for it, look for Bonding Boss. But it's the same thing as this. What it is is it's Slick Stick and it's Boss and it's combined into one. So it's one product. So you only have to use one thing. What it does is it chemically bonds to your glass surfaces. So it gives your paint something to adhere to. Um, so if you're painting ceramics like this, that's already been glazed, glass, glass vases, glass candlesticks, metal trays, anything that's very slick and has no pore surface, you're going to want to use bonding boss. I'm not going to say what this is. Um, you're going to want to use bonding boss. And the way you do that is you put a coat on and then in about an hour, you're going to come through and put your second coat on and it's going to give you the full coverage like we have here. And then you need to wait 24 hours before you can apply your paint. So I had to prep these pieces. Um, I just cleaned them up really good. I just used rubbing alcohol because they're ceramic and they're sealed. So, you know, rubbing alcohol, cleaned them up from anything that was on it. And then I did the one coat of slick stick or bonding boss. And then I, about an hour and a half later, I came back through and did my second coat. Um, and this is what my finished project is. I did use a chip brush on this because um, you can't wash this stuff down your sink. You have to clean it like you would need to go outside to the hose or something like that to really try to deep clean it. And you would need to clean it immediately after, you know, being done using it. Yes. Um, if you're going to try to save your brush and use a different brush. But I just used a cheap, cheap um, chip brush. So that I could toss it. Um, I will say that if I ever do use it on a piece of furniture, um, I usually usually use a foam roller. So that way I can toss it and not have to worry about it. But it also gives it a smooth line. So this does have quick, brush strokes. Quick, quick thing about that. If you're using a foam roller, make sure you move quickly with it because the slick stick or the bonding boss will start to melt the foam. Yeah, because it's chemically bonding, so it, it does do it that. It will melt it. Um, these do have some brush strokes on it. I'm not, I'm not really worried about it because I'm wanting to give these an old crock look. That's what we're going for because I absolutely love the shapes of all of these little containers. So that's my prep work for this piece, um, but I do highly suggest that if you are into painting glass or, you know, little metal trays or anything like that, grab you um, a jar of Bonding Boss because it can be your best friend when it comes to uh, painting stuff like this and it actually being able to withhold um, the paint and, and wear and use and all that kind of stuff, if that makes sense. So... That's my um, sales advertisement for Bonding Boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like. It's a really easy product to use. Um, just, just know your brush. Um, know if you're going to be able to save it or if you're just going to use something to toss it. 
and definitely, definitely wait the 24 hours, let them dry all the way, um, and they're good. And you can, it's really good, like you can rub your nail across it, and it's not going to scratch or peel any of that paint up, so that's always a good test to know if your paint is really going to stick to it and if this stuck to your glass really well. Um, and right now, we don't have any bonding boss on our website, but we do carry it in the store. I just haven't had a, a chance to add it to yet. Add it. So if yeah. it is something that you're um, really looking forward um, to getting it and you need it sooner than we can get it online, just, um, let, us just know. let us know through Facebook or the email or whatever. Rodney can definitely get you taken care of there. Um, I will say, though, um, I know I, I see people, they paint glass and they don't use a primer on top of it. I'll tell you that there's... A chalk paint says that it'll adhere to anything, no matter which, there's like tons of chalk paints out there and they all say the same thing. I, I can tell you, they will not stick to glass. There's nothing for the paint to actually adhere to. It'll just scratch or peel off. You have to put some sort of primer that bonds with to the bond, surface. That bonds with the surface in order for your paint to stick to this and then you can seal this up and then everything will be good. So Lorna had a good question. She says, so does the bonding boss leave a white finish? Bonding boss comes in clear, white, gray. That's it, right? Yep, clear, three, white, and gray. Clear, white, and gray. So if I'm doing a piece of furniture that has like um, maybe like a wood tone to it, but it's not real wood or anything like that, or if I'm not wanting to do a lot of sanding, if I'm just, because I like, right now I have a curio cabinet in the back of the store that there's no way I can bring that thing home and sand it and do that prep work um, in order before before I paint it. So what I have plans for is to clear, use clear bonding boss on that. So that way if I do decide to distress it, the natural wood tones will come through instead of white or gray. Right. We use so. we use clear uh Clear bonding boss a lot. A lot on furniture. I use clear bonding boss on furniture a lot. But on ceramics and anything like that, I usually have just white. And, I'm, you know, I'm just still working through the jar of slick stick that right. I already have. But in the future, when this one is out, bonding boss is what it is. But, yes, gray, white, and clear. So you can get it in clear, too, so that way you don't have the white. All right. Let me list everybody. I know I chatted. I said, hey, with the uh, keyboard. Go ahead. But let's go through Let's go through the list of everybody who's joined us so go far and said hi. We, May May made it craft said hi. Jay said hi. Susie said hi. Lorna Curtis said hi. Judy Humphrey said hi. <laughs> Kathy Queen said hi. Hi. Donna Kathy. said hi. Lisa Green said hi. Hi, everybody. And Jay was reminding everybody to like the video. Like the video. If you watch May May's channel, you know to Vinny the video. Vinny the video. And we I'm know gonna, you watch May May's channel. I'm going to. We are almost Cause, all cause the way. Because Missy, Missy watches it all the time. We are almost all the way prepared tonight. <laughs> like I thought I wasn't going to have to get up and get anything. But I am Had my Little up. Caesars pizza. Got my Mountain Dew. I'm ready to go. Yeah. We worked at the store today, so... Gavin and his friends are down at the pond fishing. Fishing. It's it's not our pond. It's our neighbor's pond. But they're they're fishing, so they're having a good time in this rainy weather. Hope, rainy, hopefully yeah. they'll catch some catfish. Margie, hi. How are you doing today? All right, we're gonna start out with the smallest one. So you said here is where I'm at center. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of different looks with y'all. Um, a couple of different looks with these jars. Um, and I also. I really wish I, I, if I wouldn't have worked today, I would have had a little bit more prep time on this one. I think it would be cool to like put some uh, painter's tape on here and then stencil like a blue line or something like that. You know how some Crocs have that kind of look to them? Yeah. You know, the blue lines. I think some that's cool. But you, if to do that, I would definitely need my chalk paint to be all the way dry before I put some tape down to put that so it doesn't fill up the tape. So we're just going to kind of do it simple. Um, but I definitely think that these jars all have the possibility to grow, you know, to add more character to them as you want. So, um, I'm just going to get y'all started with these. So let me, I was kind of wanting to do the texture on maybe the bigger ones. Yeah, that's maybe fine. Like it'd be, it'd be easier to see the texture on the okay, bigger ones. Okay, so on these two little ones. Margie says she's doing good. good Glad good, to good. be here. And this is a fresh jar of paint, so that's super exciting for me. 
Lorna says she's got her coffee and toast. She's ready to go. Ready to go. Coffee and toast. Kathy said, I rod need the video. <laughs> <laughs> rod need the video. All right, so I get to open a new jar of paint. It's not often you get to do that. I'm pretty stingy with the paints. He likes to tell me to use all of my other one, but I didn't have enough. So we're just going to use a, a brand new Marge says she probably can't stay for the whole show, but she will finish tomorrow. All right. Well, thank you so much, Margie. So this one is just going to be really, really easy. I'm going to try to use the paint off this lid. For these jars, those smaller ones, I think that the simplest thing to do is to just give it a basic paint. And then I think what, in the end, what I would like to do is just, um, oh, I got paint on the counter, is just maybe add a little bit of dark wax to all of this. So I'm not really worried about brush strokes or anything like that. I'm just wanting it to be on there. And that way when I go to put um, the wax and stuff on there, it'll grab any of these lines and the, the detail, kind of giving it like a pottery crock look. I went with sandbar because I felt like it was the closest to that kind of look, right? Is that what I'm trying to say? We love those vases too, Margie, because they remind us, they look exactly like Crocs. They do. With the, with the little handles and everything. Mm -hmm. So they were actually, what, little cookie jars or something? That You know what? There is a lid. We so, had lids for some of them, but some of them, right didn't, here, there's, some of them didn't have lids. Because I didn't throw them away. Do you see them? Yes. So, yeah, here's what the lids look like. So they were kind of cool. But yeah. so Missy said, let's take and turn that into a mini crop. So, I think it would be fun. Yeah. So like today, when we were looking through the, the paint cards, she chose sandbar because it looked exactly like all the crops it's, we had in the store. It's really close. Because Missy loves her crops. I, you know what? Okay. Not not today, but the next time, I'm going to do a little uh, yeah, excursion time. through the house and show you all her crocs. Okay, so you see how easy this is to paint and it, with it, the, the I'm going to say bonding boss so that way I don't confuse anybody. Yeah. How easy this is to paint with the bonding boss because if you, is which I can, where's that lid at? Right here. This has nothing on it. It's just the original ceramic, right? So and what I'm going to do is put a coat of paint on it. And let that dry. And let it dry and show you what happens when you chalk paint. For one, notice how the chalk paint's not bonding to the surface very well. Yeah, it's, it's just, just sliding around. Sliding around. We're going to let that dry. And then I'll show you what happens when you don't prep your piece to give it that um, that bond so, so that way your paint has something to grip on. Too. Margie agreed that it does look like a crock. As it Pooh does. would say, a handy pot to put things in, Lorna said. Yeah. TJ Sanders said, hello from Tuscaloosa. I do love the color. Thank y'all. Sandbar is a great color. Sandbar is a very good, pretty neutral color. One of the furniture flippers that, come, that uh, buys paint from us all the time, it's one of her biggest... Mm -hmm. colors that she uses you can't go wrong with it it's just a good neutral hey tamitha how are you doing hi tam let's put some corgi love up there no not hide there we go let's see corgi hearts there we go if you're new to the channel uh we do the corgis because that's missy's favorite dog and we have one we have one we have a monster dog. It's an annoying dog, but it's it's a good one. She's a good pup. Will bonding boss work on? Susie asked, "Will bonding boss work on a glass vase that has ribs on it?" Mm hmm. It it'll it'll paint anything. Yeah, it's like it's like um, a, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a primer that essentially etches itself to the surface. If I so use, it's really good. If I use this chip brush, Tam, we're doing good. Thank you for asking. Um, I can show them how to use bond. Like yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, hold on. That's the only chip brush you got? I, I have to use a different brush. Well, just use the, the Dixie Bell brush with the, uh, the, the sea salt. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, it will. It will. Because sea spray doesn't. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna work on these be... two, and then we'll I'll show you because I actually do have two candlesticks over here that need to be. If the rings are going around it this way, it's ribbed. If they're coming up, it's fluted, Susie. If um that need to be, I have two candlesticks over here that need to be primed up before I can paint them. Yeah, just show um, them. So that. I can show, show them how them easy that. it works. Yeah. Um, so while all of this is drying, I'll show y'all how how that works. And show them what your neat idea to keep the slick stick from melting the jar lid. Okay, so this product right here. It so can. It can pull in the crevices. So you want to make sure you apply two thin coats. That's where, Missy, where I only use one coat to do most things. Like with the these jars, Missy did two coats. Two coats. The other product that I'm going to show y'all today is Sea Spray. Um, you might have seen me use this before. Um, I'm not quite sure, but I, this is something that I do love to use, um, especially especially if I'm trying to add anything like texture or um, just build up on a product of you know on a on an item or something like that. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, this tells you to use two. Um, level scoops of this with the Dixie Bell paint. Um, I'm going to tell you, I don't do that. Um, I just mix it. I don't never really measure anything because I'm not going to add an eight ounce, a full eight ounce jar of paint to paint these two bars, jars with the sea salt. So um, depending on the project that you're doing, you really kind of, you can just kind of wing yeah, it. Yeah, just, just wing it, eyeball it. Yeah, oh, here's something excited. Eyeball. Tina says she's sorry she's late. She's sitting at the airport in Dallas and waiting to board to go to London. To go to London. That's fun, That's Tina. That's going to be fun, That's fun, fun, fun. I hope you have a safe and very fun trip. Absolutely. Um, okay, so like I said, I don't kind of, I don't go by the directions on that. I kind of just wing it. Hold on, was you using sea spray in the... For these. Yeah, yeah. what, are you going to show them how to use the primer? I'm going to finish these up, and okay. then I'm, I'm going to go that I'm way. I'm confused. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, so it comes with a scoop in the bag, and it's just, um, are you on this one? No, not yet. Okay. You need me to be on that one? Yeah. Overhead we go. It just, it's a really powdered, I, I, you know, I don't even know what this actually is made out of. Probably sodium carbonate or something. I'm not 100% sure, but what I like to do is pour a little bit of paint into... Oh my gosh, Susie just returned from Ireland. Ooh. That sounds like fun too. It does. I just like to pour a little bit of paint into a bowl. And it did have a little bit of water, so that helps my paint be a little bit thinner. And then I like to make a mess with this and try to balance my brush. Yeah. It's okay. No harm, no foul. And then I just start out with a little bit. And then I mix it into my paint. And you can see it immediately starting to thicken up. But remember that less is more. The more you mix it up and stuff like that, the thicker it's going to get. It's going to be like a brownie consist consistency. Am I saying that right? Yes, consistency. Consistency. Um, consistently brownie. So like the more you add of that, the thicker it's going to get and the chunkier it's going to get. So it depends on what you're looking for. I bet it was so much fun. So you said it was so fun going to Ireland. I bet. So you want to start out with a just a little bit because you can always add a little bit more and that way you don't have to add as much paint because this is actually going to go really far. So I'm going to put this back in here before I spill it. But that's it. And I'm this bag right here will last you forever. Yeah, we've... This is my first bag. And I can't tell you. I've done lamps, vases, furniture. I've done tons. Oh, yeah. We used it on that grunge piece. Yeah. yeah. I've done tons of projects with this bag. And it has lasted me forever. So um, this is it's fun, but it'll last you forever. So it's a good product to have forever. Forever. So what like I like. Like that kid from uh, what was what movie is that? I don't know. It's the baseball Sandlot. The mm. Sandlot. So usually I do use a chip brush for this, but I'm saving my chip brush for the candlestick. So I'm just going to use my Dixie Bell brush. It is really easy to clean out, especially if you have um, 
the, the brush comb that will help you brush through and get all the product out of your paintbrush. But what I like to do, I'm gonna hold it like this because it's easier to have my hand in the jar, is I just stipple it and dab it, no rhyme or reason. Donna said, it seems like you've used it on here before. I feel like I have, maybe not a bunch, but I've used it a lot out off camera. I'm trying to think of what camera. we, I, I forgot what, I think we, I forgot what we used it on at. We did use it on a live though. Maybe I did. I can't remember. But can you see? Can does it? Is it showing up? Oh yeah, it's showing up. It's nice and chunky. Mhm. Mm the fun thing about this too is like you could, if you do another color paint, you can also just like dry brush the on top of it, and it'll hit all of the high spots. Lorna says you did it on another vase. Maybe, see, I love doing it on bases. And a lamp. You did no, you didn't done, do the lamp on the live stream. That's I didn't right. Do it, yeah. I've used it a lot. I, I've had that bag for a hot minute. Um, I've it, used it a lot. It's really good I, for giving like a concrete effect, too. Yeah, if you use it with like gravel road or something like that, it really does give it that. So I will say that it does take a little bit longer to dry. Well, that makes sense because it's like, Cause it's it, an it additive. Has the, yeah, it gives it a buildup. So all of that, those raised places and stuff like that, um, it takes a little bit longer to dry versus if you just straight paint it. But it's fun to do this kind of stuff with like two or three different colors um, just to give it, you know, shadow and texture and all that kind of stuff it's looking pretty good that's a lot of texture though i think it's gonna look good though and then any high spots when it's all the way dry you can just kind of like wipe your hand around them and knock those off if you want to but just think when you go to all of that texture that's in here when you if you were to uh, brown wax it or anything like that it's going to get in all of those spots. So it's going to be really easy to make this piece look very old and very um, primitive. So if that's your style, this is a fun product to have to yes. uh, um, create that look. And we're just going to do the same thing to this big one too, because I think this one will be a lot of fun to have. Most definitely. Even more build up. So what I'm going to do, let's see, because I do have... But yeah, like she, and the funny thing is, you don't really have to do anything extra. Is if you no. got it up under some good lighting, it really gives it a neat effect. Yeah, it has. Um, and this just your paint will just get thicker as you sit. So sometimes you can just add like a little bit more paint to just thin it out a little bit. Jay said, "Just give it that dabby dab." Yeah, but if you need to, you can all. You can always just sprinkle a little bit more. Just a little bit more because it doesn't take much at all. And mix it into your paint. Tina says she's got a ghost. She'll see us all at the end of April. All right, Tina. Have a good trip. Have fun and be safe. Yeah. So this one will be able to get a lot. Holy cow, you can see the texture now for sure. Yeah. A little dab of do you, that's right. That is right. And it, it it does give good coverage. I don't know if it's because it's got the additive in it or whatever. I mean, this it's VC Bell is a good paint as it is, but as far as coverage goes, but it, it seems like with the with the um, sea spray in it, it does help. I like sea spray. It it really works great if you if you're in the grunge texture. It's you most like definitely grunge, good for doing that type of look. The primitive look. Primitive, yeah, like you're doing here. This would be more like hand hand handmade crocs. Yeah. With no uh, finish. And it'll keep that matte look. Yep. Now, if you wanted to make your crocs look or 
this, since we're making these look like Crocs, if we wanted to make them look like a newer Crocs, we could finish them with gloss clear coat and that'll give it that glaze look. And if you run your paint a little bit on purpose, then it'll give you that, that extra, that extra glazed look like you see on a lot of the older style Crocs. I just kind of like butter to turns. Yeah, go around it after I get it all the way covered and just make any peaks. Yeah. You just want to make sure you get it coated all the way on there. Mm -hmm. And another thing that you can kind of do um, is you can just kind of pinch it a little bit in your fingers and then just spread it around it. And then build it up that way. And dab it, dab back over it yeah. so it doesn't stay dry. It helps it if it's a, it's just a little bit more smooth or if you have like, if it looks more like paintbrush than what you want it to. It's actually a really neat idea. Mm -hmm. You can kind of just do that so that way it doesn't, let me not get my arm in this. So that way it doesn't look so much like a paintbrush, like, you know, like it's just natural that way. This one will have a lot of texture, yeah. I think it's gonna look good. And like I said, this is easy to clean off your brush, especially if you have um, the comb, which I don't have mine right here to show you. That has become my most favorite tool. It is to the use. best tool to clean a paintbrush, especially when you're doing stuff like this. I would have never thought it, but. It it was a, a good one. So you can see how good it is compared to the smooth one. I want to switch to the front screen so I can see that the over. texture on them Crocs a little bit better. Don't pick it up though because it's, it's wet. See how tech? Yeah, you can see the texture really good. And see, like really these are good. almost already drying. Yeah. You I can wonder go ahead if and I should. Those. But yeah, you can most definitely pick up that texture. Should I leave them smooth or should I make them look like that? I think you should leave those two smooth. Okay. Lisa says she loves it. I love it too. I it's a it's a really fun um, technique and it's a really fun. Um... So we're gonna leave the two smallest ones smooth, and we're gonna leave these two rough. Yeah. These two right here. Let me grab one more paintbrush. She's gonna grab another paintbrush real quick since we used the other one for the so, texture. Yeah, I don't wanna put that I don't on wanna it. mix those up. Let me grab. So Let's there's that. One. I don't even know how, how long have we been live? Oh, 29 minutes already. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a quick project today. Um, Susie said they all look fantastic. All right, going back overhead. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get my second coat on here because it dried really quick. And then we'll be able to let it dry. But I still want this to have brush strokes in it, kind of like. So normally what I would do is I would go in the, like painting something round like this, I would go this way and then this way. So that way it would um, level out. But for this, I'm kind of just going back and forth. And then as I'm... That way it keeps that handmade. It just keeps that, where, where yeah. it, You know how they did the clay pottery on the wheel? That way it keeps that look. I'm wanting it to have that. And then I'm kind of like, after I get all the paint offloaded of... From my brush onto the the crock, I'm just kind of just keeping it going in a different way, so that way it still has that look. I'm just wanting it to look more like pottery in that way. Love it. Yeah. Me too. With my hand just I love the way that's got that because it does it looks like it's been on a potter on a wheel 
I don't know what they call it, potter's wheel. This color works it? really well for that too. I think that would be a cool thing to get into. The color's perfect for that. Mm-hmm. It works out really good. You just, your hand look like your hands look like you've been messing with a potter's wheel right. as well. Oh, I should push that out of the way, huh? Okay, so I'm just gonna let these dry. Oh, we should probably move these out of the way of the main cam there. Yeah, let these dry. Oh, that almost got on my computer. On my pewter. And that was real simple, right? Real simple. Yes, super simple. I had so, the privilege for sh at shopping at Rusty Relic Saturday and got some absolute gems. Can't wait to go back, Jay said. Yay, Jay. We appreciate you coming down and visiting, Jay. Always. So this is one coat. Am I on there right? That's just no primer um, and just one coat of the uh, chalk paint. And you can see how easy it is. Can you see how yeah, easy you can, it is? Yeah, you can see it's coming off. That's how sure. easy it is to take off the paint with no with no primer. Because no matter how long I would have sat here and let it dry, I could have left it sitting here for two days, and I still would have been able to come back through and um, scratch it with just my nail. And I don't have long nails. I keep my nails short. I still would have been able to scratch it and take the paint off like that, no matter how long I would have let here and let it sit here. Oh yeah, you can rub it in between your fingers a couple times and it'll yeah. start smearing right so off. So I can't, I can't stress to you enough the importance of when you're doing projects like this, if you're wanting them to be durable and usable, um, you definitely need to use a primer because I could literally sit here and take every bit of this off. Yeah, with my nail. We're not um, we're not saying you have to use bonding boss. You use have you to, gotta you have a to bonding primer. A bonding primer, and bonding boss is one of the best primers for this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's um that's the best example I can give you of what happens when you paint glass without a primer with chalk paint. It's just gonna come right off, and I'm using no effort to scratch this off. It comes right off. Thank you. You see it? Yeah. It's really easy. It comes off too easy, actually. Mm -hmm. You didn't even have to use your fingernail. Because I'm just using my thumb, and look at that. I have soft hands. So, oh, you're saying my hands are like sandpaper? I have soft hands. Oh, yeah. That's a... You're right. You, you, you know... <laughs> Because I, don't, I wash them so much. I don't, have soft, I don't have soft hands. Okay, so I have these candlesticks, right? Um, and I wasn't going to do this tonight, but I'll go ahead and show you, especially since all of these projects are kind of sitting here drying. I'm going to set these over to the side so I don't accidentally get primer on them. But these are just, um, these are resin, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. These are just resin, so that's like plastic or whatever, right? Um, it's a type of plastic, yes. Yeah. It's harder than regular so plastic. So, chalk paint's going to do the same thing to these, kind of. Um, it, it would be a little bit more durable to paint these without priming them um, versus the glass. Um, but it's still a very slick surface, and there's nothing for your paint to grip on to. So, um, these are definitely ones that you need to prime. So, let me just show you. I was what it would how, it, how that worked. What it would be like to um So explain to the tinfoil to him. Okay, so the reason why I have this tinfoil on top is because this when it dries, it it dries, it dries hard. And I'm not very good at keeping um the rims of my paint jars clean. That's why I usually put them in squirt bottles. But for this product, I don't want to put it into a plastic squirt bottle. L Lorna said you have those manly hands. Oh, yeah. Thank so you. So what I like to do is just take a piece of tin foil and wrap it around my jar and then screw my lid on. And then that just keeps everything. It keeps all of this nice and clean so that I can open it. Clean for the most part. Yeah, anyways. clean for the most part and open it better. <laughs> I do need to... Um, I need, I need to stir it up there because it's been a, 
minutes since I've used it, and I don't have a stick in here. So yeah, it's that simple. The sticks in the there's sticks in that top left drawer in the laundry room. Uh, it's been a minute since I've used it. It's been a, what a day or two. Shake it. Shake it. So I'm just gonna shake it. Shake it up. And then, bam. Now you have to have a new piece of temple. Yeah, I'll get a new piece of temple, but easy. It just so happens that I'm sitting right in front of the kitchen drawer where the tinfoil is located. Okay, so what I'll show you is... Sorry. Um, this is just a chip brush. And so what I'll probably do is I'll toss it once I'm done with it so I don't have to worry about um, trying to clean it or anything. Um, I've already prepped these up as far as cleaning them. I cleaned them when I cleaned these jars and stuff like that. So what I do um, is it, it's thin like, it's thinner than chalk paint. So it's just thin. And then I just dab it and put it into all the details. Uh, you, I would say you're looking for full coverage, but not full coverage like you would not be so a much, paint job. Yeah, that way it doesn't build up. You're just wanting it, because it, it does, it is a, it's thinner. Because don't want it pooling like Susie asked about right, a Right, you don't want it to. Um, so you just want to pay attention to any details and stuff like that just to make sure that you don't have it. So the best thing that you can do as far as that goes is um, once you get done painting the piece, before you walk away from it, of it before you walk away from it, just um, go back through and... Uh, really look at any of the details and stuff like that just to make sure that you don't have any drips or run or any pulls or anything like that so that way you can just smooth it out with your paintbrush before it dries all the way. If you've used a glaze it has a very similar uh, consistency. It is really thin but it and it goes really far I mean I'm not even submerging my brush into the jar I'm just barely dipping it and I'm just making sure that I get into. And if you got a, quite a few projects to go with, like let's say you're painting a, a, one of those uh, Ikea pieces where it's the laminated plastic that's over right. top of it. You get a 32 ounce container of this stuff, it'll last you the whole piece, no, mm -hmm. no issue. You'll have some left over. Because you're not really, you just need enough of it to get a good b surface bond. Right. And you can do the cross brushing like Missy mentioned, and it's a cross hatch type, and it'll uh. Because like the better your brush, the better your um. And you can wash this out outside in a bucket if you, you want can't, to. You just you can't put it down your sink. You can't put it in your sink. Because it will clog up your PVC pipe, right? Or which that, I'm pretty sure that's what it should be if it's running down to a main drain, either that or ABS, the black ABS pipes. It's just not recommended. Both of them are plastic, so it would bond to it, no problem. Almost like a PVC glue. But, yeah. but it's really simple, really simple. It's just a lot, it's, it's thin, it's not the same um, thickness as chalk paint. Um, a little bit goes a long way. Um, the biggest thing is waiting uh, 24 hours to let this fully dry and chemically do its thing to bond to your surface. So that way, no matter um, whether you're silk, whether you're chalk paint, no matter what, your paint is going to have something to grab onto. Um, so that way it, it you'll have a professional lasting piece. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about if you bump it. And that's or that's the main thing you're looking like for that. is you want your you want your paint job to last, whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's where this comes in really, really good at. Yeah. But yeah, you cross hatch it, it'll fill in any of the stuff. If it's really, if you got uh, some extra buildup, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy to sand it. I'd say almost as easy as chalk paint. Yeah. So it's it's really easy to level it back out. And you can always like if you're doing a big piece, 
Um, you always can go over it with a really fine sandpaper and um, go over it before you put your chalk paint on it if, if need be. Right. But see, like once I get done with all that, this is where I come back down to the bottom just to pick up any of the excess paint from where it's, you know, leveled out, smoothed out, and anything like that because it is a lot thinner than chalk paint. So I'm just smoothing it back out, grabbing up any of the excess, and then going up through here. And the same thing, just finishing that out. Well, I guess it was kind of lucky you had those candle stitch because I yeah. didn't even think about the showing the, the whole process. When of... I, I did those jars, I thought I was like, oh, I should have done the candlesticks, but it was too late. I had already gotten rid of my brush and everything. So I was like, well, I'll just get them another day. And it does have a, a kind of a smell. It's not overbearing. It's or not powerful. overbearing. Uh, to me, it's, it doesn't smell worse than the gilding wax. And you all know I don't like the way the gilding wax smells. Missy doesn't mind it at all, but I bothering. don't like the way it smells at all. All right, work with me. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's it. That's how easy it is. Um, if you are doing this on your kitchen counter, I definitely suggest putting something down instead of doing what I did and painting it on top of my counter. But um, yeah. after I get done with the live, obviously I'll come in with a scrub brush and get it all off so that way it's not all the way, you know. If I wait a couple of days, yeah, I'm probably not going to get this off. Yeah, not even with a scraper. <laughs> so I will clean up my counter. So if you're doing something like this. That. I should have handed um, you some wax paper. Just uh, wax paper is perfect for that, by the way, guys, as opposed to parchment paper because wax paper won't let it s stick to it. Yeah, protect your surface, protect your surface, and protect yourself. Yeah. You should wear gloves when using a slick stick as well. I'm just gonna touch that up where I picked it up. Yeah, but yeah, that's how easy it is. And the same thing because that's it. This is. If I'm going to use this brush, I might as well use it now. Yeah. So, yeah, once you start getting started with Slick Stick, if you want to maximize the life of your brush, yeah, most definitely, uh, if you're not throwing it away, yeah, you'll be fine. But you're going to, like I said, you're going to want to wash it outside. And after you're done. Like, after you're done. Don't lay your brush down and think you're going to come back. Go ahead and wash it. Um Usually what I do when I'm in between coats, because like I, like I said, usually I wait about an hour and a half um, and then I come back through for my second coat. That way it's um, fully covered and I, I feel comfortable enough to come through and chalk paint it. Um, I take my brush and I just wrap it up in uh, wax paper and uh, make it really tight so that way it keeps the moisture of the Ooh, that one's cracked that's cr that crack at the bottom is kind of cool yeah although i don't know somebody else might not like it i think it's kind of unique where the resin's cracked at yeah so so yeah we uh you know, we all we got our fiber optic internet installed at the store. You know what? Last week, right? I think so. I, think I was pretty it. excited about it, and then uh, turns out that we're not getting that good of coverage between our one modem. So I do have to put a mesh network in. Yeah. So yeah, it might be one or two, two or it could be two or three weeks before I actually get around to. Uh, be able to do that it's gonna, because our the way our store is laid out all that metal interferes so i've got to have a minimum of at least three modems to form the mesh network spaced uh 50, 50 feet apart once i get the uh the first one then i'll be able to see how what how what the distance is going to be on those we may end up having to have four but right now it's looking like three and then we'll be able then we'll be able to go live from the store and you know, do walkthroughs or I think whatever going with you guys. The store is going to be so much fun because, like, Missy really wanted to do that today, and I was like, we just don't have the distance. We can't has, get past um, the third row. So many things come into the store. 
so yeah. many new items come into the store and stuff like that. And I'm like, right now I've got two or three different vendors running sales and stuff like that. Yeah, one went That'd on sale today, 40% off. Cool to let other people, you or know. She'll be 40% off tomorrow. Yeah, to um, let other people get snagged some of them deals or, you know, something like that. Or just to show all the cool stuff, because sometimes we get some co we really, do cool, have some really, really cool, cool stuff. stuff. We've got some really good vendors that bring in some very unique items, okay. which is really, I don't know, really awesome. I think, honestly, I should have painted this part first. <laughs> Probably. And then went through and did the bottom, because I have to keep on touching it, and then moving it, and then covering it. Honestly, I think your coverage is good to put paint over, if you ask me. Honestly, yeah, on this piece right here, I think one one coat of slick stick would be fine. Yeah, as long as you're not trying to even out the surface and make it look like it's perfect. It'll give the paint, this will give the paint something to um, grab onto and that kind of stuff. But for like the glass, the ceramic, I definitely wanted to do the two um, just to make sure because it is glass. So then I just wrap this on here. Yep, the tin foil. I'm telling you, when I saw she was using that, I was like, that was such a great idea. Uh, also, I found these there. paint pours for uh, one gallon cans that I think we're gonna buy one, one or two of them at least. Easy. To make it easier when we're messing with the one gallon sizes. And it's got a yeah. stirrer built in too, so it's really, really cool. So yeah, I'm just making sure, just making sure that I don't have any. And hopefully we'll have some online classes coming up soon. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited the, about that. We've been we we're in a planning process now. We have two on on the well, not on the books, but we got two worked out where I've got the details worked out. Right. But then we'll uh after we concept it, we'll have a kit to show and be able to hopefully be able to do something really cool. Look how good that turned out. That turned out really good, actually. What are you doing? Is that a wet brush? It's a dry brush, but it still has a little bit of paint on it. I got you. Try not to. Let's see. It kind of makes sense. You want me to lower it down so everybody can see it really good? Whoop. I really like them just how simple they are, <laughs> like this. I mean, that's that looks like a real croc. What do you guys think? But I definitely think it's going to be fun to add some brown wax to them. To those? Um, yeah, even to these, just to go around the edge right here. Like, I would want to clear wax it first and then add just take a, like a skinny detail brush and then just add some brown wax around here and then buff it, you know, wipe off. Right. Just so there's a little bit of shading right here. And then right here around the he um, handles. I think that that would be really cool to just add a little bit. Um, Lisa said, that's awesome about the classes. Can't wait. Oh, yeah. And then she said, it really does look like a croc. They do. They do. And they were pink. Pink before. They were just pink ceramic. And now they're crocs. Yeah. By the way, I spelt it C-R-O-C at first. And then Missy was like... Is that how you're supposed to spell it? Is it C-R-O-C-K? So I was like, I don't know, and I don't have time to look it up, so I changed I changed it to C-R-O-C-K-S. One or the other, y'all. Kathy said, I love these. These are so cute, I think. I think they'll be... I think Susie I'm, said, they look authentic. They do. They really do. And okay, that was so. the trick with Missy going around the, the, the you know, this way. The constant yeah. direction, it builds that build up. And it also helps that the uh, there's a little build up from the uh, the slick stick as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then these, like I said, these is Bobby these... said if you had a dark brown rim, it would look like a bean pot. <gasps> it would look like a bean pot. <laughs> I love bean pots. So these are a little bit. Um, these will take a little bit longer. You can make the little one a honey pot like Pooh Bears. <gasps> oh, how cute would that be? Oh, to get bother. like a honey stick and put it in there. It would, that but would so, be what did the Pooh Bear's pot have? I think it said honey on it. Mm -hmm. 
So these are going to take, these are still wet, and these are going to take a little bit longer to dry. I love I that mean, idea, actually, the poo bear thing. Right. Um, these, are, I mean, it, it probably would take a good, you know, letting it sit here for, what, 30, 45 minutes? Yeah, because they're still wet. Because when you go through and you're dabbing and you're building up all that texture, you're making the peaks. So the peaks of the texture and everything, that's going to take longer. It's got to dry all the way to the inside. It'll dry on the surface faster, but you're wanting the inside of all of this texture to be dry because you could literally take your finger and mash all of it. So I'm not wanting to do that. Susie said hers, her crops were used for sauerkraut. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are obviously just decorative, you know. Uh, uh, these would be cute with greenery in them. Yeah. This display just like they are. Not, You know, you could pay to... Um, H-U-N-Y, Lorna said. That's how it was spelled on the, on the honey pot. Ah, yeah. Yes. Um, these would be cute with, like, utensils in them. Yeah. Sitting on the counter, stuff like that. I mean, I think they have a bunch of possibilities to use. Um, well, I know you'd put greenery into the two small ones. That biggest one would look cool with utensils. Mm -hmm. But like I said... Um, I like the texture on the middle size one a little bit more than I like the one on that one. They definitely need to dry longer. But I did just want to show you... One thing I wanted to show you tonight was the importance of slick stick. And the other thing that I wanted to show you was um, the sea spray in case you haven't seen it or... Um, I, I really couldn't remember, but I just wanted to show you how I was going to do that with these pots because when I do get, um, when I do get them finished, what I'll try to do is make sure that Rodney gets a picture of them so we can post them on the YouTube channel. But, um, I definitely think they, they're going to be a lot of fun to keep working with. And Lorna's got a great question. Could you iron on one of the decoupage mushrooms on it? I don't know about ironing how on cute would that because be? it's ceramic. But I know you could put one oh, on there. Oh, um, I think you could iron it on as long as your iron is probably on a low setting. So I don't know. Low. That's okay. that, that's where you're the expert. Yeah. I'm just the, I, I'm just the watcher. I think you I'm definitely could like say this one right here if I wanted to put the, the mushroom man behind the on curtain. it. Um, what I would do is put my mod podge on mod podge on and let it dry all the way, and then. Um, get my mushroom ready and put it on there and then just take a piece of parchment paper to go over it and then I would probably just put my little um little iron on one and then just go over it and then give it breaks you know like not yeah that stay way on not it sit and long you know that way you're not doing that to the ceramic but ceramic's notorious for cracking mm -hmm. due to expand uh, expansion and contraction when it's heated up and cooled down but I don't think you're going to let the heat sit on it for that longer right. at all. Just I mean, no different than putting it in the sink and filling it up with hot water to wash it or anything like that. So as long as you're just, you know, putting it on there and then giving it its breaks, I don't see why you can. Yeah. I don't see why you can. I think it'd be easy to. That's actually cute. I could um, add a mushroom. And they're really popular. I mean, crop, mm -hmm. uh, the cookie jars with mushrooms right now are like, I might do that Crazy actually. popular. I might add the little, I might decoupage mushrooms onto one of these jars right here. And then this one, I definitely, these I definitely want to add the brown wax to. Definitely. I think that would be a lot of fun. Probably. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine it would be. Oh yeah, it will be. I think they'll be cute. I think they'll be cute. And I can't wait to get them finished up and get them into the store for sure. You'll make sure you take some photos of it. Yeah, as soon if when I get these all the way to the finishing point, um, they I will. These right here are really simple. They just need to keep on drying. But especially if I mod podge it, um, that one is how cute would that be to put? That would that be on cute. There? H U N Y. And then these these are primed up, and I can it's already drying because I can touch some of it. And this is the last one that I did, so I know the first one that I did is uh, definitely... Laura said you could do both could. mushrooms and honey pot. I could. I think so, too. These are bonding boss. And they're... It's dry. Yeah. I think Bonding Boss actually has a little bit better coverage than Slick Stick does. Which in this case, it, obviously we use Slick Stick because you don't it's want the product to go to waste. 
but yeah. Bonding Boss is the alternative. Which, ironically, the price was the same when they mixed the two, which was really good. I think that was really good that they were able to do that. Donna said, their crops were used for kraut and Spanish pickles. Yes. Pickles. I pickles love pickles. Cold packed, hot packed. It don't matter. I like pickles. These will be fun to paint because it has all of that and be fun to dry brush on top of those for sure. And I actually love sauerkraut too. Have you ever had sauerkraut on a hamburger? Like take a cook a hamburger, right? And a little piece of uh, kielbasa or if you like Kaneka, like we all do, you put a piece of Kaneka sausage on top of your hamburger with the cheese on it and then you top it off with some sauerkraut and a little bit of ketchup. It's so doggone delicious. Yeah, he does love that. And Anod Nostal asked, can I ask a question? Aren't crocs supposed to have a very smooth ceramic finish since they're cured in a kiln? So yes, generally they'll have a uh, the glaze over the top of it when yeah. they're done. And if you want to achieve that look with this, then you would apply a uh, gloss mm -hmm. clear coat to achieve that effect if yeah. you were trying to make it look like an actual real crock mm -hmm. but a lot of a lot of the handmade old ones are not smooth where the glaze will be uh the glaze will be run or dripped from where it's stuck where it was stuck in the kiln and dry yeah. but you like uh, we, we have a couple in the store that were made in the early 1900s and they're pretty rough looking we also have a few that are unfinished Mm -hmm. I do. We have, unfinished. We have some that are the, unfinished. We, we even have a butter churn that was that's unfinished. Unfinished. Um, but yeah, you could easily give these a gloss clear coat to have to have that glaze look like most Crocs or you know stuff yeah. like that has. Um, but again, they, these a, are just ceramic jars that we're just yeah. making imitate the I just kind of yeah faux Crocs. That's what we got. Okay. Yeah. F A U X. Yeah, uh, we have one in the store yeah. that looks kind of similar to this one with all we the do. texture on we it. We have, I mean, and yeah. it's glazed as well, but it looks similar. To I this. mean, there's not one single one that's absolutely perfect. They all have, yeah, yeah, stuff like that on them. I mean, but turn crocs. Any of the old ones, do. any, any modern ones. stuff is yeah. usually pretty perfect. Yeah, but these would be easy to give that gloss, um, a clear coat too, so that way it does have that kind of look if that's what you're going for for sure. Jay, you could use uh, Mod Podge to seal over it. You could use, uh, he's asking about the mushroom. You could also use uh, clear coat. a gloss clear to give it that glazed effect. Honestly, if you go over this with uh, Mod Podge, if you sealed up this chalk paint with Mod Podge, you, like if you were to decoupage on it and then go over the whole entire thing with Mod Podge, it's going to give you that sheen. Susie says, sauerkraut, apples, and onion on a pork roast. That sounds freaking delicious. Whoa. Whoa. That sounds delicious. <laughs> now I'm going to have to get me a pork roast to yeah. give that a try. I think, yeah, I think you just added to the grocery list. Yeah, that's really awesome. Adding to my grocery list. Yeah. That was, mixing that with the ramen we're always eating. Yeah. Ramen. Well, this is all I got tonight. That's all you every, got tonight? Yeah, because these, these have to dry. If I start touching them, I'm just going to move paint because of how thick it is with the, the texture. Okay. And then these, I'm, I'm really going to think about the mushrooms on these now. Y'all got any more questions, guys, before we go? Yep. And then... Jay said he's hungry now. Yeah, I know. I, I, got, know. I, can't, I can't help you, Jay. All I got is the little Caesars, the little skeezers. <laughs> Jay's the one that told me that joke yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> all right, guys. If you if you have any questions after the show's over, uh, uh, don't hesitate to ask in the comments or send us a uh, message message on Facebook. Yep. Or you can even email us if you want to. We appreciate y'all watching tonight. Yes, yes, And uh, like Jay said, we've got bad weather incoming. So, Jay, you stay safe. If you live in Alabama or anywhere in the southeast, stay safe because we've got a lot of flood warnings coming in for tomorrow yep. as well as some tornadoes. Lisa says she can't wait to see the final product. I'll, I'll make sure that I get pictures of them posted. 
Yeah, because I right. think they're going to be fun. That's right. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we'll see y'all later, and y'all be safe. Yep. And have a wonderful rest of your night. We'll see you Friday. Good night. Yeah, we'll see you Friday.